using communication in conflict. Hi, I'm Beck from Be Free Emotional Fitness Training, and I support women and girls to become emotionally stronger. And I'm Vern from Move Forward Mentoring, and I specialize in male mentoring, helping boys and men find their passion, speak from their heart, and build better relationships. And together we are Rekindling Relationships. We work with couples through mentoring sessions as well as facilitating communication and creative workshops to build deeper connections. Welcome to our podcast, designed to help you strengthen and bring more fun into your partnership as well as create a more loving, healthy and strong connection. Hey everyone. Hey everyone. So we're back with another episode in when couples need to communicate and this is probably the trickiest one. When we're in conflict. That's the hardest one to communicate properly in, isn't it? Yeah, because normally it's in the thick of an argument and then both people sort of go to their corners and then here's my argument and, you know, I'm right, you're wrong, um, all that sort of stuff. Can become very heated. Yeah. So how do we navigate this effectively? Yeah, and what sort of things come up? Like, you know, what creates conflict in a relationship? It's quite a few things, isn't there? There is. There is a number of things. I would say that children are a big one because we have children and it's something which definitely creates conflict and stress in our lives. Having to deal with children and, you know, especially because they're teenagers, it's a different form of dealing with them. That's probably the only thing we have conflict about for the most part. And chores. You're a bit slack on the chores. (laughs) (laughs) That's the first I've heard of it. (laughs) You want to talk about it? No, no, let's not talk about that one. What else is there? Attention, getting enough attention. So people feeling like they're being neglected. Money. Money's a big one. I think COVID and all the stress that people have been going on in the last couple of years, financial stress is normally a problem. I think it's become in some ways even more of a, more so. And that, I guess, incorporates work. So, you know, you could be arguing that one's working too much without spending yep. time with the other person. And if you're working from home, then you're pretty much stuck in the same space with each other, which can also make things tricky, can't it? Another one is sex. So not getting enough? Mm-hmm. Getting too much? Arguing about that? <laughs> <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> that would be... The- like, will you back <laughs> off, lady? <laughs> I just need to get some sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Said no man ever. <laughs> Sometimes we need sleep. Another to, to big one conflict. that apparently is come up for people a lot of late is cell phone usage. Oh, okay. So someone's spending too much time in their phone. Mm. Yeah, I've actually mentored a man who said he really struggled with that because he'd jump in a bed and he couldn't cuddle his partner because his partner would be just Facebooking and Instagramming and just doing all that sort of stuff. So I was reading an interesting stat that says that half of Americans in a romantic relationship deal with this issue of their partner being distracted by their cell phone. So it was saying that 51% say that their partner is often or sometimes distracted by their cell phone when they are trying to have a conversation with them. And 40% say that they are often or sometimes bothered by the amount of time their partner spends on their cell phone. Sorry, what was That's that? Huge. I was just on my phone. I was just, <laughs> just sending a couple of messages. Did you say something? <laughs> Scrolling Facebook. <laughs> Is that being a really big problem? Yeah. Yeah. Apparently it's become one of the biggest problems. So what else is there? Another one that comes up for people is not feeling heard. That is an important one, isn't it? If you don't feel heard, then you're going to react, aren't you? I feel like there's probably lots of different ways that people come into conflict and it's natural and being in a relationship puts you in the space where you have to rely on each other more. So therefore, conflict's going to come up. We don't have conflict with most people except for our family and our close partners. It's a natural part of the family unit, isn't it? The big thing, I guess, is learning how to deal with that conflict, how to communicate better in our relationship so that when we have conflict, when we have a disagreement, there's an opportunity for both people to walk away feeling heard, mm. feeling like the conflict has been dealt with, hasn't just been avoided or pushed to one side or ignored, that That conflict is seen as, oh, this is something that we need to work on together rather than this is your problem. This is my problem. This is our problem, actually. Yeah, Yeah, there's growth in that, isn't there? Yeah, so much growth in that. Yeah, and I think growth is key, is that when we can do this properly, when we can actually have these really good conversations with each other, then what's going to happen is our relationship's going to grow and it's going to bring us closer 
Because when we actively deal with conflict and we know we can trust our partner that if there is conflict, we can talk about it and then we can move on. We can repair and move on. It makes all the difference. Absolutely. So how do we deal with conflict in a constructive way? I don't know. I don't talk about it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, stonewalling. I want to avoid it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that is a way that people do deal with conflict, not a healthy way. It's not a healthy way, is it? But a lot of people do avoid or stonewall. And then in the future, that just keeps on coming back, doesn't it? Of course. It will never go away. That's the reality. I think if you're like, oh, maybe if I avoid this conversation, it will go away. It never does. And <laughs> you've tried that a few times. Might be a little warning bell going, oh. It didn't seem to work the last 14 times I did it, so probably not going to work now. So what do you think? What's a way that we can actually deal with this? I think when it comes up for you in a relationship, it's to not say nasty things, obviously, is a really important one. Not to point the blame, say, you always do this or, you know, you never do this. So, for example, if the one that comes up for you is attention, that you're not feeling like you're getting enough attention, if you say something like, you never give me any attention, you don't love me, you're inconsiderate, that's not going to fly real well. So instead of using you statements, use I statements. I don't feel like I'm connected to you when you don't send me a text or give me a call. I feel a bit lonely and disconnected at the moment. So using those I statements instead of you is really helpful. Yeah, that's a really good point because it is about making it our problem to solve together. As soon as I make it your problem, as soon as I say this is your problem and this is what you're doing, you're probably going to shut down. I'm instantly going to get defensive. Yeah, you can, that's what we do. We get defensive when we're attacked. And so when you attack in an discussion and conflict, then the other person has to go on the defensive. They've got nowhere else to go, do they? Exactly. Mm-hmm. But if you do the I statements, I feel like this, your partner who loves you naturally wants to fix it. They will naturally go, oh, I don't want you to feel hurt or unheard or insecure or lonely. So they will naturally want to make an effort to fix that if Mm. they don't feel accused by using you statements. I feel like this conversation as well needs to happen way before you're actually in conflict, doesn't it? Because in the middle of a conflict, then we have a sort of a way, a bit of a pattern that we do all the time. We tend to take our sides and then fight from our sides, but we get caught up in it. we just rehashing the same old argument, the same old discussion over and over again, and we're not getting anywhere. And I think it's because we haven't put any strategies in place about what to do in this discussion. How do we manage this discussion properly? How do we do this so we don't go into conflict? It doesn't get angry and people get heated and then everyone walks away and nothing actually gets said. I feel like the discussion needs to happen beforehand. These are our rules that we are going to have this discussion by. So when we're in conflict, Like you said before, we're not going to call each other names. We're going to just focus on what the problem is and not do any shaming or blaming. We're going to use I statements, like you said, rather than you statements. Work on a solution together. Think of a solution together and before it gets heated. And own your mistake. So take responsibility for your part played. Mm, So apologize if you need to. Yeah. That's always important. Listen and acknowledge the other person's perspective on things. I think pausing before you respond, because I think it's easier said than done that we're like, oh, you know, do this before you get angry. But <laughs> most of us, <laughs> we, we're we getting really pissed off and angry and, th- yeah. and that's when we want to talk about it. So I think just pausing for a moment and it's okay to be angry. I think it's just how you project that out. Like we said, stick to the topic, communicate assertively, but respectfully without, you know, yelling or screaming or swearing. Having said that, I did lose my shit the other the day and you're really good at holding space for me when I lose my shit and I wasn't angry at you I was sort of just angry and everything had got too much for me and then you know things had happened and I was annoyed with you but I was more just like ah it's all too much and I lost my shit and yelled and stomped around and you're really good at just holding that and not taking it on board you don't get upset with me for yelling and I really appreciate that because I guess I feel like, you know, you could just walk off or slam doors or react in a certain way, which then just makes it worse. But you know that I'm not trying to get angry with you. I'm just getting angry. You know what? And sometimes I'll challenge myself. So I'll stand there. It's even like if someone's crying or angry. It's it's just another emotion, 
really, mm-hmm. isn't it? Yeah. And I'll stand there sometimes and sometimes I'll be like, oh, I'm feeling uncomfortable. And then I'll be like, no, no, it's okay for them to have an emotion. It's okay for them to have a very strong emotion and just stand and listen. And I'll challenge myself to do that because we instantly want to respond <laughs> or stop the emotion. Mm. But I think it's healthy to to let the person let that out. And if they're doing it in a way, which is what you were doing, you're doing it in a way where you're just letting off steam. I don't take that personally because you're not projecting it at me. That's a bit different. If you were like yelling and like raising your fist at me and, you know, swearing at me, then yeah, that's not acceptable. But you were just angry and pissed off a situation or a circumstance. And that's different. That's holding space really, isn't it? Yeah. And I think like you said about that, breathing and pausing that is about bringing that awareness isn't it Mm. and being able to hold the space for the other person one thing which we have been talking about in one of the school programs we run and we're working with these grade five six children and talking about conflict is the use of humor be able to use humor to diffuse conflict and so in that using humor it's probably maybe not getting so upset about something being able to just have a bit of a laugh and let it go see the funny side see the funny side in it probably not laugh at your partner when they're angry (laughs) (laughs) because that would go down well won't it yeah you got to read the situation well with that one. Detect the social cues in that. But that's a great one to do. If you can always find the funny side or the humor in things, then you're always looking for the positive, aren't you? Yeah, and that will definitely help diffuse with your, the situation. Diffuse the situation, help yeah. with arguments and conflict. Yeah. I mean, one thing you hate is stonewalling, and that, in a sense, is just shutting down, not saying anything. And that's a really bad tactic to do, to use in conflict. Maybe that gets used because people feel like no matter what they say, it's going to be chucked back at them, or it's not gonna it's not gonna be held. So sometimes people stonewall to avoid the situation so i'll just shut down and avoid the situation Mm. maybe it will just go away but Mm. you can't actually avoid this conflict this conflict is there it's happening in front of you it's happening you're part of it and i know from the past is that me trying to avoid a conflict didn't actually solve the conflict it probably just slowly kept it escalating to the point where then there was a blow up so knowing to get in early and go oh this is a problem we need to discuss this let's work through this let's do something about this definitely works much better with us i've noticed Yeah, and I think if that is your tactic to shut down and stonewall, then you are creating a division between you two. You're separating yourself from the other person. And then they feel insecure or uncertain and or more angry or more scared or more frustrated. It can really escalate the situation and make it worse. The idea is when there is conflict, you need to lean in and go, okay, we're having conflict. We need to do something about it. But this can be hard. Like imagine you've got this argument that's been going for years and years and years and years and years. Both people have taken up the sides and they're just starting to shut down from each other. They're not talking to each other anymore. They're not dealing with the conflict. The, it just sits there, you know, like this really heavy weight between them and nothing's getting done. It just sits there. And you probably know if you've disconnected from your partner and you're not really talking together or sleeping together or doing fun things together, there's conflict in the relationship. Mm. There's some form of conflict and people have got to the stage where they're shut down or withdrawn. They don't want to talk to each other. Really, if you want that relationship to work, you've got to actually go to the heart of what the problem is and how you're going to fix it together because you can't leave it. It will not fix itself. I feel like it's a very masculine trait to just sort of ignore things and hope that they'll just get better. It doesn't. (laughs) <laughs> at the end of the day so what would you suggest for people in that situation Ooh, what do you think well when you're in that situation it sounds like it's a pretty desperate situation doesn't it so you either might need to go to a mediator and have someone help you out because you might have gotten into a pattern where you can't even bring up some things anymore without it becoming too much of a drama. So maybe you do need some mediator help or counselling help. There's also a realisation that in a relationship, it's natural to have conflict and that's some things you're just going to disagree. Yeah. Maybe just there has to be an acceptance of, look, we're never going to agree on this. As long as it's not like a major value for us, maybe we can just let it go. Maybe we can just be like, all right, let's just agree to disagree on this point. Like, you know, for us with chores, like, you know, I feel like you're probably... <laughs> I'm mooching. I'm mooching. Oh, that's a good word. <laughs> wow, you're making me sound like I'm really dodgy and don't do anything. <laughs> just, she, does, she does so much. Man, <laughs> the, the oil that keeps this family moving. <laughs> Oh, thank you. So conflict is something that everyone's got to go through. It's normal. It's natural. 
It's part of your growth together as a couple. You may be in old patterns from previous relationships or from observing how your parents were in conflict and that might not have been very healthy and you may be copying those patterns maybe being aware and realizing that and taking responsibility for your part and how you can maybe address conflict in a better way that's a really important point is that we tend to act in conflict how we were taught by example and when you recognize that and you go oh hang on a second i do the same thing that my mum does when I'm in conflict. And realizing that probably makes you go, ooh, I actually didn't like that about Mm. my relationship with that person. So I need to change that. How do I do that? And that could be, you know, your partner probably sees that as well. They're probably like, oh, wow, I can see you just acting out the same thing. You're acting Mm. out the same way that your parents might talk to each other or talk to you. Noticing that, what can we do about it? How can we be in this space together and know that we're going to have to deal with conflict and do it well? Let it help your relationship grow instead of be destructive to your relationship. If there's an understanding in a relationship that, we as a couple are going to have to deal with conflict. Let's work out how we're going to do that properly and know that the better we can work on conflict together and sort it out, then yeah, the closer we get, don't we? It really does grow us together. And it means that your relationship goes stronger. If you know that you can have a disagreement with someone and that person's not going to walk out It's not going to be the end of everything. It's not going to be saucepans flying through the air or nasty words or stonewalling. If you know that you can say something, and I know this with you, that no matter what happens, no matter how angry we get or how frustrated or conflict, that you're not going to run from me. You're not going to run away. And you know that for me as well. And there's a do, real yeah. deep trust in that. And that means we know that we will be able to work this out. That's a really nice reassurance in a relationship when you know you can bring up anything. And yeah, they might get a bit frustrated or agitated, but they can hold space for you and you can raise any concern and you work on that and you move forward from that instead of just suppressing stuff or ignoring them. And then there's no growth in that. And knowing your partner really helps and how your partner deals with conflict. And I know one thing that I I need to do with us is that when we have conflict, I tend to disconnect and move away. And that is really hard for you to deal with. And that what you want actually is for me to reach in and hold you and hold you tight and let you feel that actually it's it's done and I still love you. And that's something which I probably should do more. I realize that the more I can actually just be able to go, all right, let it go now, step in, give her a hug, hold her, cuddle her in bed, then the better you feel about that. Because I know you don't like conflict. And when it does happen, it can affect your sleep and stuff like that. Mm. So I guess, you know, knowing that, I need to do more to help you in the aftermath of conflict. I think you're actually pretty good at that to be honest. And I think as we've worked through a lot of these things together, it's becoming easier and better for us to address conflict without it being too much of a drama. So I hope that if you are in conflict out there, that there's some thing in this podcast, some strategies or something that you can use. If it's getting to the point where it's too much, then call in a mediator or find a time to sit down and say, hey, this is happening. Every time we discuss this thing, this is happening. What can we do better? Mm. Even write it down. Make a time to address the conflict where it's nice and peaceful. Write down some notes if you feel like you might get a bit stuck. Use I statements. For example, I'm feeling like we don't get enough time together or, you know, I'm feeling like maybe I need a bit of a hand with the chores because I'm feeling overwhelmed. So use those I statements. And um, That's a subtle hint in there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're actually very <laughs> So thanks very much for listening to this episode on using conflict when couples need to communicate. And please check out our online course for couples and parents. You'll find the link in the show notes. Also check out some of our videos on YouTube and posts on Facebook. And join us next time for using communication when repairing your relationship. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe and follow us. And check out our website at rekindlingrelationships.com. Bye for now. See ya.